Hello and welcome back to Scale Down Customs. This is going to be part three of the 1963 Mustang II original concept car. So we're going to focus on uh, getting the interior finished up. I did get the body stripped down again uh, just in the isopropyl alcohol bath and just so you know it does weaken to part epoxy. So this door came off and I just peeled the rest of it off and of course it broke the A-pillar again so which i'm going to be addressing anyway so but yeah curious note the isopropyl alcohol does weaken two-part epoxy all right but uh we're going to address that later we're going to move ahead with the interior so first things first is i'm going to get some uh, carpet laid in here uh, for my glue i'm just going to be using mod podge which just white glue and for my carpet just some gray ken's custom fuzzy fur and my tea sifter to shake it on there so uh, let's put some carpet in and then to make cleanup easy I'm just going to put down a piece of hobby paper just to catch any extra that I can capture and put back in the tube at the end. And for application, I'm just going to be using a couple of different uh, paint brushes, just regular paint brushes. And just a little tip, this the glue will kind of set up pretty quickly, so work in small areas and load your tea sifter first. That way you don't have to be letting your glue dry while you're loading up your carpet. All right, that's a little light for the look I'm going for. I'd like it to be closer to that. So probably what I'll do is I'll let this dry up and then I'll actually add a second coat of glue and carpet on there and see if that uh, gets me closer to the, the look I want. Otherwise, what I should have done is um, spray painted the floorboards a little bit darker of a color and then that would have, the carpet would have blended in a little bit better. But um, since it is such a light carpet color, so yeah, I'm going to let that dry up and uh, we'll put on another application to see if it gets a little bit darker for me. All right, while we're letting the carpet dry up, let's go on to some other interior painting. So for the steering wheel, I am gonna simulate a wood grain on that. So I'm gonna start out with a brown and then kind of go over it with some NATO brown and then just some black, some flat black, and then just kind of blend those in. And then when I'm done, I'll finish it off with a clear yellow and that'll kind of give it a gloss and it'll kind of give the wood an interesting finishing color that I like. So um, let's do that. Now, while that's still wet, I want to add in some black onto that just to kind of blend some of that in. Okay, looks a little tiger stripey right now, but uh, I'm going to keep adding some browns and stuff just to kind of blend everything in. So that'll fade back a little bit. All right, so yeah, just anywhere that I feel like the black is a little too heavy, I'll just kind of tone it down, I'm taking almost all of it out. Um, just because the black is so stark and then just kind of blending it back in all right so that was just regular brown and then one more coat of just some light dustings of the nato brown all right so that's looking pretty good and then just to finish it off i want to add some clear yellow And then as you're spreading the clear yellow, it kind of reactivates the paints again and kind of starts to swirl them in and blend them all in. So it gives it a nice kind of a finished look, nice marbled simulated wood grain texture look, which is what we're going for. So that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. Let's let that dry up. All right, we've got our first layer of carpet pretty dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and start on the second layer. I'm gonna load up my tea sifter first. Thank you. 
Yeah, it looks a lot better. You really have to work on spreading that glue a little bit more to get it down into the fibers, but I think that does look better. So let's finish up the rest of it. There, that's better. It's still a little lighter than I was hoping, but that looks a lot better. So we'll just go with that. I'm gonna get these um, petals cleaned off a little bit and we'll let that dry up. All right, and then for my chrome trim pieces, um, I'm just gonna be using this Malto liquid chrome pen refill. Um, I just dumped some of it out and painted on. The trick with this stuff is you want it to be kind of thick so it can pool up and then give it that really good chrome effect. So it's a little difficult to paint with, but um, we're gonna give it a shot, see how it does.
All right, so just finishing up some detail painting on some of the interior pieces. And for this trim on the door panel, I think I'm gonna use uh, bare metal foil for that. So i um, got some tools for that. So a toothpick to kind of burnish it down. I've got my pointed Q-tips from Tamiya and then just some other regular Q-tips that we'll be using to kind of apply this bare metal foil. And one of the keys to making sure you get a smooth line is using a very fresh X-Acto blade um, when you're trimming your pieces in so it doesn't pull and tear the foil. So make sure we have a fresh blade on, on our knife as well. So another thing I'll do, I rotate my, so I keep my fresh blade in this one and then I'll take this blade out and put the blade from my silver handle into my blue handle. So this one's still an effective blade, but it's not a fresh brand new blade. So I'll use this blade to kind of cut my foil from the paper. And that way it keeps my fresh blade as fresh as it can be for actually cutting on the pieces. All right, so we just gotta put a little red on the door light there and then um, I think we'll be good for the interior pieces. All right, so the, for the black accents for the rims and the grill, I'm just gonna be using my Tamiya Paneline accent color, the black, and we're just gonna dab that in there. And for the wheels, um, we'll just let, let that sit, but for the grill, we'll dab that in there and then we'll get one of our Q-tips and wipe that off the raised surfaces so it's just setting up into the back. So let's do that. So for the rims, I didn't want to overfill it because I overfilled one of them. I had a little bit of cleanup to do on that. I'm going to let that set up and then I'll come back in and add a second coat, maybe a third coat if it needs it, but I don't want to overfill those. So I'll just let that set up and add another coat if I need to. All right, so we're making progress. Um, I've got the body stripped down and ready to uh, figure out how I want to dress the A-pillar and get that situated and then get the body back up into primer and paint. And then, so we've got the interior done and ready for final assembly. Some detail painting. Uh, the seats are done. Got those painted up. The doors detail painted. And the dash as well. So, Again, making progress. But since I haven't updated or posted for a couple of weeks, I figured I'd get this video out to you guys so you can see where I'm at and the progress I've made. Because I've still got to figure out how I'm going to dress the body and that's going to take a little bit of time. So I'm going to cut the video off here and get this posted out so you guys can see where I'm at. And um, make sure you stay tuned for the next one where we start uh, addressing the body and get that finished up and get this thing uh, assembled. I think uh, once I'm done with the body, we're ready for final assembly. So that'll do it for this video. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.